Welcome to the Gift Up Podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I want to finish up the NFC North with the Chicago Bears. And I think when you look at the Chicago Bears, unfortunately, in my opinion, you see a team on the decline. You see a defense that unfortunately has gotten worse since Fangio left and Chuck Pagano took over the defense. It's not as dominant as it was. The pass rush, even though I still think Khalil Mack is good, I'm not saying that, but the overall scheme, the constant quarterback pressures, it's less than what it was under Fangio. That's a problem. That's a downgrade. Uh, that I don't think that people understand how much of a loss that was losing Fangio, and then trying to replace him with Chuck Pagano. Chuck Pagano's not a bad DC. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just simply saying Vic Fangio is an elite defensive coordinator, and you're settling for less. So obviously that's an issue in itself. I think that they've tried to overcompensate at certain positions, like the pass rushing position, even though I like Khalil Mack. And even though I think Roquan Smith can do it all at the linebacking core, I think they shouldn't have went after Robert Quinn. I didn't like that move. I, I really think that Robert Quinn is done. Dallas actually needs pass rushing help. So for them to get rid of Robert Quinn, I think, speaks a lot. And I think the game film speaks a lot. Robert Quinn has made less and less of an impact each year. I don't think he's going to have much of an impact here. Is this front seven, though, for the Bears still pretty good? Yeah, it's still pretty good. You got Akeem Hicks. You got Eddie Goldman. You got Nichols up front with Khalil Mack, Trevathan, Roquan Smith. Hell yeah, it's still going to be physical and good. It's just not going to be as good as what it was under Fangio. And I think the secondary a little bit, too. You got Kyle Fuller, who I like. I think he's really good. There's no doubt about that, but... Not really understanding the play for Artie Burns. I don't think the Steelers would have parted ways with him unless there was a reason. I I never really liked Artie Burns as it stood. You watch the film. Gets beat a lot, so not really understanding that move. They spent their second round pick on Jalen Johnson. Unproven. So I think this secondary is actually pretty weak, unfortunately. And we got to remember not too long ago, a couple, you know, a year ago, they let Amos go, one of the better safeties in this league. So talent just isn't there to say this is going to be a top three unit when under Fangio, it was a top three defense. When looking at the offense, I think there's actually a lot to like, except the quarterback position and except for Jimmy Graham. I didn't under, I, that move to me was a waste of money. Especially since they drafted Cole Komet. And this and I actually like that move. I think he's going to be really good, the rookie tight end. I don't really feel why they had to compensate with Jimmy Graham and, and spend money where it doesn't need to be spent. Jimmy Graham can't move anymore. I don't know if it's charity or whatever it is, but Jimmy Graham's not going to help this football team. And you know somebody else that's not going to help this football team? Mitch Trubisky. Chase Daniel was better than Mitch Trubisky last year. That's how sad this is. And all I can say is Bears fans better hope and pray that Nick Foles can stay healthy for a full 16, which historically he cannot do. He, cannot, he can't do it. He's brittle. He's Nick Brittle Foles. So even that, to me, isn't a definite toss-up game plan for the Bears. But it is the best case scenario. Nick Foles is better than Mitch Trubisky when healthy. So it just really comes down to Nick Foles' health. And I hope to God the Bears do not make the mistake and feel obligated to lie about a quarterback battle and then give Trubisky the job anyway. I would really hate for that to happen because that would just be another wasted year, another disaster. Trubisky is turnover prone. He's predictable. He panics in the pocket. He's not accurate. He hasn't been good since he got into this league. 
has shown no signs of getting better, he will sink the Bears. And he is the reason, the sole reason, why the Bears will not have a chance at a wild card spot this year. And, I, you know, they, they go out and get Foles. And I, to me, I know a lot of people are excited about Nick Foles. But I just feel like the Bears took the safe way out with Nick Foles. Because how much of a threat is Foles really? He can't stay healthy. So how much pressure does that really put on Trubisky? Man, maybe not that much. Maybe that's what the Bears wanted. I got to say, I like their weapons. I really do. Uh, Allen Robinson is one of the best wide receivers in football. Anthony Miller is shaping up to be a pretty good damn wide out himself. They got speed with Patterson and Ted Ginn. You, you ha- and then you draft a really good tight end this year in the draft. So uh, you, you have all the weapons here. No issues with that. The O-line is actually pretty physical. But this quarterback position, man, is just plaguing them. And they, the past two years, they felt obligated to start Mitchell Trubisky. Mitchell Toyota Camry Trubisky. That's what they wanted to do. Hopefully they don't make the mistake this year. you got to start Foles, Nick Foles, and just hope that he stays healthy, even though I don't think he will, unfortunately. Sorry, Bears fans. But you at least have to go that route to start. You can't say you're going to have an open competition at quarterback and then just give Trubisky the job. We all know that Foles is better than Trubisky. With that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.